Hello, and thank you for visiting worksheets and walkthroughs.com. In this video walkthrough lesson, we're going to take a look at division on a place value chart, and this is part two. We'll be dealing with the remainders this time around. We'll be looking at this worksheet. You can go to worksheets and walkthroughs.com to print out a copy for yourself. You'll find it under our division and place value video sections, and it's entitled Division on a Place Value Chart, part two word problems four digit by one digit. We have some directions. Solve the following word problem. Show your work using numbers, pictures, and words. Let's get started. Euclid the monkey loves equal groups and writing poems about banjos. He has written 1,235 banjo poems and wants to publish them in three books. He plans to put an equal number of these poems in each book. How many banjo poems will be in each book? How many poems will be left over? Let's take a closer read of this poem as we read it sentence by sentence. See if we can tease out the important math information. First sentence. Euclid the monkey loves equal groups and writing poems about banjos. Well, at first glance, you might think this part about equal groups is a math clue with math information. However, it really is just story information at this point. Sentence two. He has written 1,235 banjo poems and wants to publish them in three books. Did you hear that? 1,235 poems? If you're thinking that was important math information, excellent, nice job. And also, we have the part where he wants to publish them in three books. So we have, so they will be in three books, three books. And we'll move on. He plans to put an equal number of these poems in each book. Ah, now that clue comes into play. We have an equal number, so he wants to put an equal number in each book. Okay, so now we're talking about equal groups. And here comes our math jobs. Here come our math jobs. How many banjo poems will be in each book? And our second math job, how many poems will be left over? Let's think about what we know. We know the total here. We, we have 1,235 poems. That's the total number of poems he's written, and he really wants to share them in equal groups into three books. So if you're thinking, hmm, sounds like awful lot like division, you'd be exactly right. Good for you. So we could set this up tradition in the traditional way. We'll write our total, 1,235, representing the total number of banjo poems, and we will use our divisor of three, representing the three poems, books he wants to make. So now you could be thinking, hmm, ah, we have 1,235, and I'm seeing that as 12 hundreds, 12 hundreds divided by three. Well, what would that be? 12 divided by three. If you were thinking four, or in this case, it would be four hundreds, would be a good estimate. Hmm. Well, let's check it out. Let's, let's see if that would be a good estimate. So now we want to take a look at solving this on a place value chart. So we could think of this, this number, the total number of banjo poems, as 1,200s, three tens, and five ones. And we want to divide those up equally into three groups. And the three groups representing the three poetry books. If you're thinking that, awesome, good job. So we have these three partitions, and we're going to divide our number, 1,235, into those three partitions. So we're sharing these poems into three different books. And we'll start, just like we do in the traditional division algorithm method with the highest place digit or the, the digit with the highest place value. In this case, we have the one in the thousands. So we're going to take this thousand and we're going to share it amongst these three. Hmm. If you're thinking, hmm, how are we going to do that? 
Yeah, you're probably right. It's not the easiest thing to do at this point. So you really can't have 1,000 and divide it into three equal groups without breaking up that 1,000. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to break up this 1,000 and we're going to turn it into hundreds. So if you're thinking 1,000 equals 10 hundreds, you'd be exactly right. Nice job. So we've got now, we have 10 hundreds plus 2 hundreds, which of course would equal 12 hundreds. And now that will probably be an easier number to divide up. So we have the 12 and we're going to divide it into three groups. The 12 hundreds, so there's 100, 2 hundreds, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 hundreds divided into three equal groups. And you can see now that 12 hundreds divided by three absolutely would be four or four hundreds. So now that we've dealt with the hundreds and divided them into equal groups, we can deal with the tens place. And in the tens place, you can see that we indeed have three tens and we have to share them equally into three groups. That sounds like a pretty reasonable task. So now we've got three divided by three. Well, let's see what that would look like. One, two tens, three tens. Okay, so now we've got three tens divided by three would be one, if you're thinking that awesome. So now at this point, so far we have four hundreds and one ten. Let's move on to the ones place. And in the ones place, we have this five kind of just hanging out there. And we need to divide that into three equal groups. Hmm, how this how is this gonna work? Well let's let's take a look. So if we take five ones and we share them equally into three groups, which one, two, three. Hmm, what will we do with these leftovers? Okay, there's four, there's five. And you can see them we have one, two, three, four, five. And you can think of division as equal groups. You're really trying to divide into equal groups. So you can think of friends if you have friends over and you have you have five candy bars and only three friends you want to share them with, well, you wouldn't want to give two friends two candy bars and have one friend only have one. So what you have here is really some leftovers. In this case, we, we call leftovers in math a remainder. So we have a remainder of two. So let's take a look at what our answer would be. So if you have 1,235 and you divide it into three equal groups, you have 411 or 400, 110 and 11 being 411 and this remain, remainder over here we have two left over or a remainder of two so when we, when we write our quotient we'll do that right underneath this place value chart when we write our quotient so we have 400s 110 and 11 with the remainder of two so we'll represent that with capital letter R and the digit 2, 411 remainder 2. So now that we've done that on the place value chart, let's see what happens with the traditional method. And when we divide with the traditional algorithm method, we start with the place with the highest value. In this case, it's the thousands place, and we have a 1 hanging out right there. And we're going to divide 1 by 3. So 1 divided by 3. Hmm, that was not so easy to do as we as we showed here on the place value chart. One divided by three. We really couldn't do that until we broke up the one. And that's what we'll do with the traditional algorithm method. That's why we do it. So now we, we have 12, 12 hundreds that we're dealing with. We have these 12 hundreds. And we're going to divide by our divisor of three. You can see that. So 12 divided by three, if you're thinking four. You'd be absolutely correct. Four times three is 12. Subtract, we get a difference of zero. We'll bring down the tens, and there are three tens. And that's what we had going on over here. We had our three tens. And now we'll think three goes into three. We did that on the place value chart. We had three divided by three was one. So put that up there in our quotient. One times three would equal three. Subtract. A difference of zero again, and we'll bring down the ones. And there were five. So we 
We thought, well, three goes into five. One time, one times three is three. Subtract, get a difference of two. And that difference of two now becomes your remainder. So we'll put it right up there. We'll show our remainder with a capital R and the digit two in this case, a remainder of two. So there you have it. We have 1,235 divided by three would equal 411, remainder two. And you think back to when we estimated, we thought it would be close to 400, and it is. That's awfully close to 400. So now, since we know the inverse of division is multiplication, we can go ahead and multiply our quotient times our divisor, and then add on our remainder, and we should get our original dividend of 1,235. Let's check it out. So we'll take 411 times 3, 411 times 3, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 110 would be 3, really it's 30, but then we'll say 3 times 4 is 12, and we're at 1,233. We you say, well, that's not quite right. That's because we haven't added on our remainder yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll put our remainder back in. Plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 tens, 2 hundreds, and 1,000. 1,235. That absolutely checks out. And now we'll go back up to our math job and see if this all makes sense. How many banjo poems will be in each book? Well, we'd have 411 poems in each book, and we'd have how many left over? Two. So now we'll put that in word words. We have our numbers in our traditional algorithm. We have our pictures on our place value chart. And now we'll put it into words. So if you're thinking... There will be 411 banjo poems in each book. Good for you. And to answer the second math job, two poems will be left over. And there's our remainder of two. There was a quick look at the vision on a place value chart. This time we dealt with the remainder. Thanks for checking out worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com. And we'll see you again next time.